When we're doing point estimates, we're basically taking data from a sample and trying to create some parameter or a value that helps describe the population. One of the common ways we need to do that is when we're dealing with reliability engineering or, or things where we're using a discrete Poisson distribution to predict events or perhaps uh, the Weibull distribution or the exponential distribution to make predictions about average life or failure rates of our products. So an ability to calculate lambda, which is the primary parameter of the exponential distribution and the primary parameter of the Poisson distribution, the ability to estimate that for a population is an example of a point estimate that we often have to look for as engineers. <coughs> so let's assume that we've got 50 products and we want to take a sample of 50 products and determine from that what the population lambda would be. So not the lambda for these 50 products, but let's use the sample of 50 to predict the lambda so we can make future predictions about all of our products in the population as we come through. And that requires doing some calculations. Uh, this particular example would be drawn from um, an experimental methods or testing uh, methodology uh, where we bring our data together as testers. So. So typically, if I start with those 50, I might start running some various tests. The time scale of this test is very, very long. It's measured in years, but it could have been in weeks or months or days or hours or even minutes. So it's whatever scale I'm working with, that's the scale of the Lambda, lambda capability that we're going to be able to come up with. So let's assume for the moment that I'm doing a very long-term study, perhaps in healthcare, of how with the likelihood that 50 people chosen at random uh, will be admitted to the hospital over a period of time. So it's some event that happens over a very long period of time, but it can be any naturally occurring random event. After two years, I take a measure of my original 50 products or people, and I find that three have failed. So three products have failed, or three patients have checked into the hospital, whatever it is. Three failed during the two years, so I now only have 47 that have not failed. So if I wanted to estimate my lambda from that, is lambda is basically the, the failures over the amount of time invested in those failures. So there's an equation for that that I'm going to use. And that equation is discussed in most statistics books around the exponential distribution for point estimation. Uh, the three in the numerator here is the three failures I've seen so far. And that number will change throughout this presentation, but it will stay the maximum number of failures that I've seen so far. And that's divided by the amount of time that has spent, been spent testing so far. So, so far, the three failures that we have have been tested for two years. And we put the, I put that in red to show that it's data for the failure. Plus, the remaining 47 have also been tested for two years. Now, you might be tempted just to say, why didn't you do two times 50? And in a minute, you'll see why. But it's the amount of time spent on the failures plus the amount of time spent on the successes. That becomes my numerator. That's my total test time, if you will, going through. So now I continue my experiment. I wait another four years. And I go out and find that in the four years subsequent to um, my first test, two more failures have occurred. Uh, so now I'm at six years with two more failures, five total and 45 left. So the lambda number right here, that's what I'm estimating is my lambda. At this point is five, the total number of failures that I've seen, over the amount of time that has been spent. And notice that in years two through six, I didn't continue to test the three that had already failed. And that's why these terms are so important. So it's the two times three years that the, those original three failures were tested, plus the two times six years that the subsequent two were tested, plus the six years that the 45 that haven't failed yet have been tested. So as this unfolds, you'll see that there's a red entry for each line of the experiment with the new failures for each, uh, plus there's always a green entry for the amount that's left times the total time. So, so at this point, I've got a lambda of 0.018 as I see my way through. If I continue the test, and measure it at 10 years, and maybe have seven new failures between years six through 10, the process repeats itself. I now have a total of 12 over the original six years for those first three failures, the original 12 years for the next two failures, and now an additional 70 years uh, for those seven new failures, plus the 10 times 38 years that I've been testing the ones that haven't failed yet. And the process continues as I see my way out. For each line in the experiment, I can deduce what I want, what I have for my lambda as I go through. 
So that's the nature of the experiment. How long I experiment, where I can stop, um, is an important characteristic. I could wait for all 50 to fail. I don't know when that will be, uh, but it could be a very, very long time. Or I can stop the experiment midstream, something known as censoring in the test world. I can censor the experiment and say that the lambda I have now is probably close enough to the lambda I need long term that there's no point waiting another 30 or 40 years for these last 26 people to fail or the last 26 products to fail. I'll stop at some point in between and I'll cover that in a separate note. Uh, but the lambda being calculated, your final lambda, whatever's on this bottom line, that's the lambda you would now use to describe the population. You could have stopped anywhere along the way and notice how, how the lambda varied over time with a low of 0.018 to a high now of 0.053 and, and a mean life of 18.7. So the values you stop on are often for the convenience of not being able to run the experiment anymore. At other times, it might be because your mean life has approximated the value that your engineers have told you is, is the expected mean life of the product. Whatever that estimate is, you run the experiment for as long as you can. Keep improving your knowledge of lambda and mean life. And then from then on, uh, those last values, that, that 0 0.053 right here, that serves as your point estimate for the lambda of the failure rate associated with these products.